Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. We are here and I'm excited. We got our brother, Sheikh Ahmed, all the way from Japan. Sheikh Ahmed, are you there? Yes, I am. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, fine. How are you? Thank you. Good, good. Alhamdulillah. So it's Sheikh Abu Hakim and your original your name was Naoki? Yes, that's right. MashaAllah. How things in Japan? Yeah, alhamdulillah, the things here uh, regarding to COVID is uh, getting uh, settled little by little. Yes, people are living, start living uh, like previously. All, of course, with all, all of them are wearing masks, of course. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa is a greeting for, for, yes, for day daytime. Yes. For daytime. Yeah. How do you translate peace be with you? Assalamu alaikum in Japanese. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Give us some, <laughs> some, some of uh, your history and you also have a PowerPoint pre presentation that you're going to go ahead and share with us. Can you start that, please? All right. Thank you. Can you uh, start showing the PowerPoint? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go over with the 26 years of experience as a Japanese revert. Very quickly. Yes. Please go on. So uh, let me self-introduce myself a little bit, then remarkable notes for Dawa in Japan through my experience, then uh, possible uh, challenges for Japanese leaders and Muslims. Yes, please go on. Yes, uh, as I was introduced, uh, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My given name is Naoki. Uh, Maeno is my family name. So, uh, Naoki means uh, it's actually a straight uh, big tree. So. As you all know, the names uh, have its, you know, the secrets and the the, the luck. So, alhamdulillah. Uh, hometown is I, I was brought up in the middle of Japan, Aichi Prefecture. Yep. Then, uh, alhamdulillah, I was fortunate enough, to, uh, thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, guided to Islam, January January 12, 1994, at the age of 18. So it's been 26 years now. Uh, now you know my age. Um, Education, I was graduated from Osaka University of Foreign Studies, majoring Arabic language because I embraced Islam. And then second, I uh, studied during 2000 to 2006 in Damascus. Alhamdulillah, I was fortunate enough uh, because it was before the Thawra, before the, uh, you know, the crops and everything. Uh, studied under uh, many uh, beautiful and wonderful uh, teachers. Alhamdulillah. Uh, please go on. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, forget about the uh, my work experience before going to Damascus. After coming back to Damascus, 2006, uh, September, uh, all those, what, 14 years, uh, I've been working in Japanese company and uh, yeah, trying to get the understanding of the realities. Yes, go on, please. And at the same time, uh, working as volunteer for you know Dao works and uh, educational works, yes, <clears throat> alhamdulillah. So some remarkable notes for Dao through my experience is that the debate style persuading approach, aggressive approach like street Dao, which may be uh, quite accepted and popular in Western world, is not suitable for Japanese, in my opinion, at least, because. As you know, Japanese uh, in nature, in general, are uh, quite shy. So when they come across uh, near to you, then uh, start approaching to them, starting about uh, talking to about Islam and so on, even with the gifts or whatever. Uh, they may show you that they are very much interested in listening to you uh, as an etiquette, but <laughs> in their hearts, <laughs> they are not really welcoming. Please go on. Second, active prayers in the field of Dawa among Japanese leaders are always limited, while such prayers among second generation are rising. Yeah, the second generation prayers are rising, which is very good, alhamdulillah. However, you know, these uh, only even considering my little experience of 26 years, I don't really know, uh, you know, th those prayers in Dawa field among leaders are quite 
limited. Why is that? Perhaps it's because a nail that stands where we hammer down for the for the mentality of Japanese liberals, and this norm is in the Japanese society is very big. Whoever you know uh, stands up, <laughs> I mean, you know, everyone dislike it. Uh, that might be a reason. Please go on. Number three, targeting new people all the time until they pronounce words of shahada and leave them after that without proper follow-ups seems very self-satisfying -satis effort and unfruitful at all, unfortunately. I know the, you know, seeing people embracing Islam and then pronouncing shahada is very joyful thing and happy thing for all, all of us Muslims, alhamdulillah. Uh, however, you know, many those who are enthusiastic in dawah activities are very much in, into targeting on those new people only and then you know forgetting about the follow-ups which is more important yes uh, please go on that's why uh, for those you know 26 years at least uh, on many years it's a uh, it's a little less than 100 years or even about uh, around 100 years since islam reached to japan or muslims reached to japan uh, still, the numbers of Muslims here in Japan is very, very, very small and limited. Why? Because many people are coming and go, come and go, because of, you know, lack of the follow-ups. And number four, the language, cultural, mental barriers between Japanese libats and Muslims immigrants do exist and may make many Japanese libat away from masjid and its activities. Perhaps modest, because, mashallah, Muslims in general are all kind and generous. So they do take, they do care about the other person's uh, feelings. So too much, you know, taking care of the other person's uh, feelings, maybe that is the cause of uh, not coming close to each other. Yes, go on, please. Living profession of dawah worker is now rising gradually in Japan as well. However, its efficiency is questioned because Islam does, does not separate practicing faith and daily life activities, as you know. So if this norm increases, I fear that uh, people, Jap people in Japan may take the view of Islam as uh, similar to other religions, Buddhism, Christianity, whatever, which separates the, between you know, practicing faith and daily life activities. Um, thank you. Go on, please. So these are just for, uh, because of the time, uh, for your knowledge, there are many, alhamdulillah, a few Japanese Muslim fig figures. Yes, uh, of course, some of them have passed away, alhamdulillah. So possible future challenges for Japanese Zibas and Muslims in Japan are uh, the challenge that we have to keep Islam as Islam, not the uh, deviated sect or whatever. Because there has already been some what trials to make Islam as you know Islamic sect under the religion of Japan, which is to make anything coming from outside of Japan suitable for Japanese way of living. Uh, number one is Islam is a comprehensive way of life. Of course, do not separating sacred and the prof uh, from uh, profound. And secondly, Islam is truly international. Uh, mashallah, I, I like the advertisement of the Igna, what was it? <laughs> the Islam to prohibits uh, racism in America. I think that the, the racism is also uh, quite uh, severe <laughs> social uh, challenge in America, right? As well. Thank you very much. Yes. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you know, the Clearly says in Surah Ibrahim, Sayyidina Sayyidina Ibrahim, the fourth, Aoud Minna Shaitan Rajim, Wama Arsalna Mir Rasuni illa bilisani kawmihi liubayina lahum. We've never sent any messenger except with the tongue of that people so that, you know, in order to be clarified. So I do strongly believe that uh, message of Islam need to be uh, spread in. In, if, if it's in Japan, in Japanese language, inshallah. Thank you very much. That's absolutely right, Shay. Tell us what really struck me about your story was that at such a young age, 14, I mean, we say young age, 
But many times, you know, when you go back in history, you see that young men at that age, they were totally different. They weren't stuck just playing Xbox all day, you know, stuck in the basements, many just doing things that they shouldn't be doing and not even reflecting about why am I here? What's my purpose? What am I living for? You started thinking about that at the age of 14. What triggered that? <laughs> I I thought that's very normal or natural thing for anyone any uh, young people who are the age of you know privilege uh, the to ponder upon why am I here <laughs> what am I living for <laughs> it, it is so special it is right isn't it but uh, don't you find it odd that many people like you say that okay that you find it that's a natural question to ask <laughs> you want to ask but many people do you find it odd that many people they just yeah they, they, the, the answer uh, for that which i thought of is that because you know uh reaching to that answer is very difficult so mm -hmm. people just you know tell themselves forget about it then you know go after the joys uh-huh and then you talk about that you thought that that answer was because it was close to home and the majority religion is that right was Buddhism. Buddhism. So you, mm -hmm. were, you were did you go towards becoming a Buddhist at one point? Yep, exactly, exactly. It was really determined and wanted to be a monk. So you were a Buddhist at one time? Yes, I was uh, before embracing Islam. Yes. So tell me, is it true that I remember? I don't know if you know Sheikh you, uh, Hussein Yi. You he also was. Uh, a Buddhist. Uh, yes, I know him. Yes. Did you ever meet him? Yes, yes, yes. MashaAllah. When I interviewed him one time, we were talking about this. We went into Buddhism and he talked about Buddha himself. What, uh, uh, what's his actual name? The Gautama Siddhartha. Yes. He talks about possibly that he might have been a prophet of Allah. What do you think about that? Yeah, possible, possible. And then people or I mean, Buddhist people uh, would be happy if, when, when they hear that. But many of them and so i was uh, misunderstand if someone tell so if some muslim tells that uh, gautam shiddhartha or buddha might be uh, a prophet they end up you know convincing themselves okay then i'm i'm fine to you know keep being a buddhist no, no, no. <laughs> yeah that's the same thing when you look at the true message of jesus Isa alayhi salam, Moses, yes, alayhi salam. Alayhi salam. when you look at, when you go to the core of their message, it was Tawheed, pure monotheism, mm -hmm. calling mm -hmm. people to be Muslims, those who submit to the will of God and practicing Islam, submission to the will of God. So when you studied his life, is there any connection with what people are doing today? We're actually worshiping him and, or they have they gone far away from his core message? Mm, yeah, it's, it's totally opposite to what he preached for. He never, you know, taught people to uh, worship me. It's kind of what we see like in Christianity. We don't yes, find exactly. Yes, respect. exactly. Yes, this yes. All, with all the respect to our Christian. So as a matter of fact, you see the, the very interesting history of the Buddhism statues. You know, they, they start with the uh, footprints, you know, the footprints. Then gradually the <laughs> the ankle and the, you know, the knees and the, it gradually completes the statue. Well, this is amazing because when you go deep into what we have left of the, the Bible, you see that nowhere ever did Esau, lay some Jesus, peace be upon ever say that I'm God, worship me. So similarly, when you look here, same thing. You don't find what we have today in modern exactly. day. Huh? So this is the interesting thing also that you now, you had like most had a very negative image of Islam. Talk to us about that. Yes. Uh, well, because all the while i was uh you know teenagers late teenagers uh, all the news which comes through uh, the tvs and so on was like the news of the war between iraq and uh, iran and uh, you know the iraqi war whatever those uh, all those uh, horrible aggressive uh, news about the muslims so anyone you know who don't go deep into uh, the, the realities be behind the scenes you know, they end up, you know, concluding themselves, oh, they are very, uh, you know, violent people and fanatic to their religions and so on. That's how I was as well. Same thing. Was this b before 9-11 or before, after? Before, before, a lot before 9-11, yes. So this was even before 9-11? Yes, yes. Now, what was like, I mean, we know the media, a lot of them here, but was it the same? Are they just parroting the same thing that the media here in certain parts of the world the same thing in japan they were <laughs> well for your information media in japan is like a copy of the media of the west <laughs> same thing 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very similar. It's almost the same thing. But what was kicking it off before 9-11? What, what were they pushing out before 9-11? Give us some examples of things that you heard about Islam that obviously weren't true. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the, like the example of uh, the war between Iraq and Iran, it's it's a war between the same believers, same I mean Muslims. So the, anyone who sees that news, the uh, I mean, how come, how in the world, the the believing those believers in the same religion fight against each other? So what kind of religion is that? And things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, now the, the Japanese, I mean, question, because a lot of this stuff is coming from this side of the world. Were they smart enough not to some like you, not to fall for the negative lies and misinformation and propaganda? Uh, uh, well, of course, uh, sure, some people should question themselves, but the, unfortunately, most of them are quite happy enough within their, you know, their societies, with their lifestyles. So they don't really, you know, bother themselves to go deep into the the, the real truths behind behind the scenes. Yeah. Mm. Tell us now, Japan. This is where this sad and tragic event happened, where you had two of these bombs, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This is where mm. it happened in Japan, correct? Mm. Yes, that's right. Give us a little bit of history of this, to, just in a nutshell. What what happened happened during this time, and how many people were killed? Innocent innocent people. Yeah, sorry, I don't know about, the, I mean, I don't remember about the numbers, but the, yeah, so many people, you know, got, got killed. So naturally, uh, I think as any non-Japanese would think about, because of those Nagas Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japanese must have been hating Americans or things like that. I mean, as natural, you know, feelings of human beings. However, very uniquely or very ironically, uh, only you know very limited very limited people hate america i mean they, they all most of them are following american cultures and so you see how america uh, succeeded in brainwashing japan into japanese yeah that's why i gave that example because you see what people are they're <laughs> good at doing it's dividing us separating us yes, Islam yes. brings us together like you you're my brother over in japan we've never met but we mm -hmm. give each other that greeting of peace peace be with you and yes. then you come over and stay at my house minimum of three days i gotta take care of you how's that <laughs> thank you it's the truth <laughs> right I know we've never met but there's that bond there's that there, there's that that connection right away alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alameen. so tell tell me Sheikh, what was it that changed your perception about islam and i'm just gonna make a disclaimer because some people tune tuning in and they think like you did oh islam here we go those terrorists this that and the other but islam obviously as you know is just calling the human being not to submit to money to jesus to buddha to anything except the creator of the heavens and the earth the one god that jesus worshiped that's the god that we're worshiping so what changed your perception about islam uh seeing and knowing the realities of muslim life true muslim life uh as in as i was exaggerating the importance of the point which islam do not separate between the practicing faith and daily lives after activities because all those you know the buddhism which i wanted once to be a monk and other other religions christianities or whatever many religions in the world they do separate those two right uh, so ever since my ego woke up awoke and then searched for the true religion i wanted the in a true religion which do not separate i mean the, which is complete way of life so i found that in the life of muslims and uh, alhamdulillah i was lucky fortunate enough to uh, to find some muslim friends uh, while i was in australia melbourne uh, as an exchange student yes did, was it a hard transition now because at that time you're still a buddhist yes i was buddhist yes did, did so you i was astonished astonished uh, you know by listening to the sayings of uh, the friends I mean, how i mean how they were so confident in the truthfulness of islam when they were talking about islam they were so confident and which annoyed me a lot i mean how can you be so sure <laughs> Yeah. The, the truth gives you that confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, exactly. It make us arrogant, but proud that we're upon the truth. Yeah. This is the truth, the huck from the creator of the heavens and earth. There, there's, there's not that like in the back of your head. Is it really? No, it is hundred mm -hmm. percent. 
And that's what have you make a grave sacrifice. I mean, you're an intelligent person. I mean, yes, you have a lot of credentials to show for it, you know, and you, I mean, you got to go against a lot of odds. Like many people I've interviewed, you really have to put Islam to the test and scrutinize it, take an analytical scientific approach, which I'm sure you did before you submitted in Islam. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't uh, follow the, the question. If was it any question? You had to make sure 100% that it was the truth, obviously. So you did your homework. <laughs> You did a lot of homework. How long did it take you before you ah, heard that no, this is the truth? Not, not, too long, not too long. Very short time. A very short time or period. Just I, I had to, you know, go beyond, the, come across the final line of uh, acquiring the enough confidence to overcome yeah. the possible future challenges for my life. I mean, as an individual, you know, Naoki, the because I because I was in the position of having a very biased viewpoint against islam you can say like a one of enemies of islam <laughs> so i could easily you know imagine how people would react to me if i were to embrace become a muslim so i had a anxiety you know for that yeah so in order to come across just that anxiety i needed a week of time but only because I, I could fully convince with the uh, concepts of, I mean, what Islam teaches about the, the relationship of, of uh, God and people and everything. So mm -hmm. that was only the matter of uh, coming across the, the barrier of, you know, getting the confidence. Now, besides the kind nature, the hospitality that you experienced from this family, they also did something. They didn't just stop there. They also did the dawah, not just with their behavior and character, but they gave you a gift. It was the Quran. And you were astonished because the person that gave you the Quran, he said, read this for yourself and think for yourself. Tell us yeah. about that. Yes. So that was the beautiful approach, a beautiful way of approach to let uh, other, uh, the one who you, you, know, you want to give the message to, think by themselves. Uh, because there was another, I mean, they, uh, they had a, a brother, I mean, which who was younger, I mean, old, older than me. Uh, he approached to me in the way of pathway, you know, persuasion. Yeah. And I did not like it. <laughs> the same family. Won. This is from the same family. Yes, yes, same family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The one who gave me the, the, the Mus'haf, the copy of the uh, Quran, and then uh, told me to think by yourself, the, who was, that was the father of the family. And yeah. <laughs> the past reading approach was the brother. But, but that's, the that, that we can derive so much uh, wisdom from there. I mean, benefit. Look, look, it's a father and son team, a family, like not only <laughs> exhibiting the true nature of how Muslims <laughs> should be kind, hospitable, right? So it doesn't matter, Muslim, non-Muslim, they welcome you in their home, they took care of you, but also they did the dawah, they shared the message with you. Mm. Yes, yes, mashallah. And, yes. And, and, and do you feel now that from there, that what he told you to do, would you advise other people right now tuning in? He said, read this book and think for yourself. Don't think like Fox, not Fox News or this news station or this Islam hater wants you to think, right? Think for yourself after reading this book. Mm-hmm. Was that a powerful yeah. statement? And would you would you advise others to? I mean, just copy that. Do the same thing. What he told you. Would you do you give often that same advice well, to people? Not straight away. After yeah. establishing, after building the personal relationship, that's the very important point. Yeah. Not just go and knock the doors of others or the visit. I mean, of the, the meet people and then straight away give the books or booklets or whatever. No, no, I don't recommend this way. In Japan. Mm, at least in Japan, no. Oh, Japan, here. We have different types here in America. You got exactly. like, uh, the bus stop dawa, <laughs> one minute, you got something. <laughs> I maybe understand. You got someone, your neighbor, maybe take yes, some time yes, yes. to know them, right? Yeah. So there's different versions. But how is it in Japan? You said that Japanese really like to, to read. Here we've lost. Yes, they, they do like to eat, lead. Uh, sorry, they, they like to lead. But with their choices. Yeah. Mm, not they, they don't like to lead things that they were given. Ah, okay. So they do take them very proudly, but most probably those booklets or whatever uh, goes into the rubbish bin, unfortunately. Uh huh. I have to give an example because you see there is a lot of good cultural. You don't, I mean, obviously Islam didn't come to just eradicate all the culture in a certain exactly. culture, correct? So we yeah. see things in the certain uh, J Japanese culture. And I, I often make this example. 
uh, that now we can't living here push our culture on someone else but we obviously when you go into a Japanese culture, they don't shake hands most right so we mm. continue that same thing out of respect for the for the for the women we don't touch what we don't have the mm -hmm. right to touch correct so tell us about that you also have the taking off of shoes which mm -hmm. actually here this is a normal culture even though yes. you got 500 some you know uh, uh bacterias and put that you you just walked on the lawn you know the grass and they sprayed it with you know chemicals and you're bringing that stuff in the house come on people but in, J in Japan, it's shoes off, right? And no shape. Shoes off. Yes. And, <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> and often the case, their foods are clean enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mashallah. <laughs> so this, this, is, this is something. What else? Tell us more about the, the Japanese culture, things that you can share with us. Well. Uh, samurai. What about uh, samurai? Is this the samurai? Some <laughs> samurai is legend, might <laughs> samurai is legend. So, so you don't find samurai nowadays in the. But you time. have the samurai. I teach martial arts. Oh, mashallah! What do you do? I, I do uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I, oh, yeah. Jesus! Wow! Well, now I, I, I do the Aikido. I mean, we... oh, mashallah! See, uh, see now when you look, you have there. Uh, I believe Jiu Jitsu is also practiced there. You have I, I this this yes. Many yes. people know martial arts. Let's say the samurai, there's certain qualities of honor, respect, dignity. Didn't these martial arts, they had this code of ethics, this code yes. of conduct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They do, they do. Yes. So is this all? Uh, uh, yeah, very ironically, to us uh, people of faith, uh, they take, you know, practicing martial arts and others as, the, as their way of life. So they you know, satisfy with it. You know, not and then don't don't go for searching for the you know father truth. <laughs> oh, further they stop there. No, right? no, they stop there. <laughs> I try to connect these different things, these qualities. You know, mm. like you have this and this. Islam teaches us to have noble mm -hmm. character, dignity, honor, respect. All of these mm -hmm. things are there in Islam. Obviously, it's on the footing of the pure monotheism. Yeah. Body. So, as a nature of Japanese people, they are uh, they are na native religious people. Uh, maybe many of them are not aware of that but you know they are very religious however as i mean that's why they they have a sense of you know uh being grati gr grateful uh, to everything around surrounding and everything that's uh, connecting them to the creator uh is another issue <laughs> mm. so mashallah lucky you uh, people of america you have uh, the you know common background of you know the prophets and the you know the one god yeah. so the distance between you know two is quite different i hear what you're saying tell me you have like eight between 80 and 100 masjids in J japan yep yeah do they we found that this is uh w one of my best friends dr sabi ahmed he runs the gang peace and and i work and collaborate with him and he says like many others that one of the most effective tools of dawa are the open houses we need to open the masjids for the not yet muslims to come how are those from those 80 to 100 masjids are they open do they have these open houses like we're trying to get people to do more here yes yeah, some of them are very limited uh lamas of masjids are mashallah doing such open house way and uh, like the one i'm um, tokyo masjid is very uh, i mean it is beautiful enough uh, even to be a sightseeing place so then they have a you know sightseeing tour and others so they welcome all the ordinary you know non-muslim japanese people every day and the uh, other other one the one for example in okachi Machi in tokyo the downtown of the tokyo uh, Masjid al-Salam uh, also, which uh, many, many times uh, that Sheikh Hussein E visits. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they have a <laughs> yes, uh, open house um, yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. But unfortunately, all the majority of masjids are quite, uh, you know, how do you say, uh, isolated or, you know, blocked within themselves, yeah. limited within themselves. And, we got a couple of minutes they're signaling that we've got to, i'm really enjoying talking to you i, re I really am. Uh, I, I, I really am thank, thank you thank you just a couple more questions we saw you giving the shahada shahada is when someone finally recognizes what the purpose of life is they testify what's in their nature that i bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth and muhammad just like jesus mosaic and all the other messenger was the last final prophet sent to mankind we saw you giving someone 
a the shahada helping facilitate this in in this in this masjid there do you see more more japanese waking up to this truth and coming to the true purpose of life in japan yeah, alhamdulillah numbers of you know uh, new muslims in japan are they in daily basis increasing alhamdulillah alhamdulillah uh, but the e challenge is you know let me repeat the follow-ups forums <laughs> Yeah, we have that same issue. Yeah, yeah, follow-ups. Very, very important, right? It's easy to get the shahada, everybody yeah. come, hugs, kiss, and then yes. forget about the person. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so we'd like to appoint like a guardian angel, somebody to be with that person, right? To mm -hmm. help them learn to pray, to help them to establish yes. five yes. pillars exactly. of Islam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sheikh, tell us, what other advice? I mean, do you recommend people to, is it easy to get a V to come to, to come visit Japan? Could people come visit you at your masjid? Yes, yes, come around, come around. Yeah, <laughs> come around. You're in the main masjid in but, Tokyo, correct? Sorry? You're in the main masjid in Tokyo. Not not a, not really a main masjid. The, 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 you know, the, it's the where I serve as Imam is the, the masjid of Japan Muslim Association. It's in the which is in, 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 yes, in the middle of Tokyo. But the, the biggest masjid in Tokyo is the Tokyo Jami, which is under the Turkish government. I see. Okay, well, your masjid is called the Camille, Camille Masjid? No, Gotanda. 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 Yes, Gotanda. Yes. Okay. Sheikh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Continue soon. Next time, maybe a part two. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, brother and sister. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you, guys. It's very nice being with you guys here on this live Ikna Dawa conference. Remember what we can learn from here. We have an obligation from the brother who shared uh, his story that he was greeted with hospitality. He was greeted with that warm greeting, but then also it didn't stop there. Then you had two people from the family, one given the Quran and say, read for yourself, look into this, don't let the media think for you. And then you had the other son who's given the proofs and the evidences. So there were a father son connection. And that's what we can do. We can go ahead and represent this Dean this, in the most beautiful way with the good akhlaq. We also have to Go ahead and share the message because if you care, you share. Thank you, guys. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.